Chuck Klaus is more than just an artist, more than just a printmaker, a painter, and a photographer. In his own words, he says he creates an experience for the viewer. When I was looking for something to do my project on, I was walking around the Minneapolis Institute of Art, and I decided that I would just walk around until I saw something that really caught my eye. And when I turned the corner and I saw Chuck Close's painting of Frank, I was like, whoa, is that a painting or is it a photograph? And so I stopped and I took a better look at it. And I realized that it was actually acrylic on this huge canvas. So I stopped and I read the little plaque that was right next to it. And it, it told me all about Chuck Close. And I decided I would look in, more into his artwork. So in my speech, I'll be telling you all about Chuck Close and how he did paintings, and he did a lot of printmaking. He did it on the wood block, and he also did reduction block, and he did scribbling and etching. So I'll tell you about those four different kinds of art that he does and the contributions that they made to not only the, the art world of his time, but also to the future. So with his big paintings, he started out by looking at 8 by 10 photographs and uh, he would make grids on them and then he would do the grid system on the canvas as well and he liked to use the big canvases because they really help create a better experience for the viewer um, he he did it all the old-fashioned way that's why he liked doing the grid system when you look at his paintings you might think that he used something digital but that is not the case. Everything was done by hand. So with that said, this photorealism that was done mainly in the 1960s, late 1960s and early 1970s really contributed to letting photography become a, a well-known source, or not a source, a well-known form of art in the future. So with these paintings, Frank is actually on a 9 foot by 7 foot canvas. So it's just like this huge painting that you go in and you look at and it's this man's face. And it really helps. Uh, he has a lot of objectivity in the painting. So his whole... his... He was trying to accomplish what he was trying to accomplish in his painting was to make it look like a real photograph. So to do that, he blurred some areas of the painting and left other ones super clear. So, like, underneath his chin there, it's kind of blurred, whereas the whiskers on his face are really, really prominent and they stick out a lot. Um... He does this to make it appear as though it is coming from an actual camera, like you're looking through a lens, if that makes sense. So when you're looking at the painting, he wants it to appear like you're looking through that lens, and that's why parts of it are blurred and other parts are really clear. Chuck Close forces the viewer to read into the surface of the painting, and that was really what he liked to try and convey in these paintings. He didn't want you to only look at it as a whole. Well, that's important to do, to see it as a whole piece of art. But he also likes the viewer to have to search in it and see the different pieces. So like in this next photograph of John, you can see that from far away, again, it looks like a photograph. But when you look up close, you can see that like all the hairs look really... You can see the brush strokes in the hair and in the facial hair, and even like in the clothing, you can tell that it was painted instead of being a photo. It's really interesting to see how he does this. Um, this next painting is Bob, which is also another realistic painting. And you can see, well, the last three paintings I've shown you, all the men have had glasses which is something I thought was really interesting because 
I've tried doing realistic drawings myself before and it's really difficult and especially when you're trying to draw glass to make it look realistic is really hard so I think that Chuck Close in these paintings so to make like the clothing and the hair and the glasses look so realistic is just incredible for me to try to understand how he does it and with acrylic paint too that's really hard um, this next type of artwork is printmaking and it, he does a lot of collaboration he really believes in working with other artists and having them help him along the way and so in this I'll be talking about his wood wood block cutting which we watched a video on so you kind of know how that process works where you have a picture and you would draw it on the wood and then someone carves it out and then you do the paint the paint on there and then you make a print of it and so in this particular wood cut is actually not done by Chuck Close but Chuck Close did a painting of Emma in the year 2000 and then the Japanese printing artist Yashu Shibata wanted to make a print of it and so he actually did that with 120 different colors and uh, this is really one of the like a really well-known Japanese style painting and not a painting a print um, so Chuck Close used his deep understanding of color theory to help out this Japanese artist while he was doing it because he used 120 colors and uh, the combination really turned out really cool and so normally in Japanese art one person picks out the colors and draws it on the block and paints while another person actually cuts the wood out and in this case uh, Yasu Shibata did all of this except for the Chuck Close helped him with some of the colors in the color theory so he provided Chuck with proofs along the way to make sure that he was doing it, doing it right or if Chuck Close had any suggestions for him he would help him out that way uh, they, I think it's really cool the, the collaboration between them so the painting that Chuck Close did took him like two or three months to make and uh, this print that the Japanese artist was doing took him two or three years and so uh, Chuck Close would kind of joke with him and be like oh it only took me a couple months and then the other artist would be like oh man I've been looking at this painting longer than Chuck has and I thought it was really cool that they could joke about it and still get along after so long I mean it's just nice to see that they can work together here's another example of a wood cutting. It's a self-portrait of Chuck Close that he did in 2002 and in this one he used 43 colors and he he used them in like different little squares so you can see that up there um, and it's really fascinating to see how it, as individual squares it doesn't really make sense as a picture but then when you step back and look at it as a whole all the pieces come together and you can actually see his face so this is kind of to contrast the concept of looking at the at the his bigger paintings whereas you can see the individual pieces and you don't need to look at the whole you need to look at the whole to understand this particular piece of work the next piece is reduction block and so in this example of Alex, I have all the steps up here, all seven steps. Um, this was actually really interesting how they made this. They started out wanting to use this super thin linoleum and put it on Japanese paper, like a really fine Japanese paper. But when they got the order in, the, the linoleum was so thin and the weather was so cold that it actually cracked and they couldn't use it and so they were on a time frame and they couldn't reorder and the paper was messed up when they got it so they couldn't use that paper either so they ended up using a thicker linoleum than they wanted to and a different type of paper and 
the way they actually do this, the reduction block, is you have the artist removes a thin portion of the material, in this case linoleum, and they make a print of it, and with that print, they reprint it after each step. So the final result ends up being this super high quality detailed picture that you wouldn't be able to do in a one step process. So when they got the materials, the, I don't know, it wasn't really turning out the way they wanted it to. And so they ended up making proofs of it on a really thin material called mylar. And instead of doing a final reduction block piece, they actually turned it into a silk screen, which is another type of printmaking. And so putting it on this mylar, it actually gave Alex's, the subject's face, a shimmering quality to it. And I think that's really cool and unique. So it goes from uh, on the left hand side, you can see that it. Uh, it goes from being super dark to really light, and then when they combine it with the other prints, it goes from being a lighter quality to like a super detailed, and that's, I don't know, this is just a fascinating process to me for some reason. Um, the scribbling and etching, on the other hand, well, in the same way actually, does that so where it goes from being a really fine light to being a really detailed production in the end. So with the scribbling and etching, Chuck Close takes different layers of color and he combines them. And this one in particular is 12 steps, it's another self-portrait. And he, instead of using a grid system like he does with his paintings, he uses the, the individual squiggles. So those, uh, those are his increments and that's the whole reason he would use the grid in the first place to have smaller cells to compare to other ones and that's what he uses the scribbles for. Uh, so yeah, he prints those and turns them into other prints and combines them and keeps combining the colors and so forth. So uh, all of his art is just super unique and I really like that all of his subjects, you would, they don't really have expressions on their faces. They're not happy, they're not sad, they're not angry, and I think that really gives a, a, like a really personal touch to each of his pieces of art because it makes the viewer wonder what are these subjects thinking, what's going on, and it really makes the viewer really look into the, into the piece of art and try to determine for themselves what the subject is thinking. He, uh, Chuck Close, is just a really cool guy, and uh, I really enjoy looking at his art. One demonstration of the way um, photography has become incorporated into uh, the artistic world is because of uh, Chuck Close and other photorealists progress in the 1960s and 70s with their photorealism and the, the everyday nature of his subjects really helped to secure the paintings as being realistic works of art and I thought that was a really cool thing for an artist to do and it really makes it feel more I want to say more personal but I already said that so it really makes it really makes the the art seem as though you can relate to it at, on a more personal level. And I'll just keep using the word personal because it seems like a good word to use. <laughs> so that's all about Chuck Close.